Hey, I'm Brandon, and today we are checking out the Shark Spartan GT helmet available at Revzilla.com. So the Spartan helmet, this was originally released back in 2017, and this is the Spartan GT version. This is the latest iteration of that particular helmet. I think it's gonna be a great option for sport and touring riders alike. I like having an internal sun visor, and that's a really big benefit for touring riders and commuters alike. So it's very smooth, works very well. I'll touch on that more in just a moment. But in front of me, I've got the fiberglass version. This is three pounds, nine ounces in a size medium. And then we've got three pounds, nine ounces in the carbon version as well. And that's over here on my left hand side. Now you might be surprised by that. Usually when you go with carbon, a lot of times it's saving weight. Uh, unfortunately, you're not saving any weight with this one. You're paying about $60 more, but that style, some people really like that. And it is gonna have a more rigid, strong shell. So that's uh, one of the main benefits for carbon as well. Three pounds, nine ounces again. One of my nitpicks for this particular helmet, we've got two shell sizes. It's around that kind of $500, $600 price range. And we've only got two shell sizes. We've got extra small to medium and then large to 2XL. And I think around this price range, we're seeing more shell sizes within the line. And that's gonna help keep it a bit more low profile with the overall size of it. And it's gonna help reduce the weight as well. So if I had to give anything to, to Shark, hopefully you'll give us more shell options, especially considering this particular price point. And both of these helmets are gonna be DOT only certified, and they will have an intermediate oval internal fit. Now taking a quick look at that, intermediate oval is a bit more elongated front to back than it's going to be side to side. But as you can see, this has a very narrow entry. So it might take a little bit of wrestling to get on and off a few times when you first buy this helmet. As it breaks in, it's gonna relax. It's gonna be easier to do so, but just something to be cognizant of. It does have an intermediate oval internal shape, but the entry is very much on the narrow side of the spectrum. Now keep in mind this helmet will ship to you for free. And as always, we do have our price match policy in place that is there to ensure that you're getting the best deal around. Now let's talk about the overall fit. Now I typically wear a size medium in most of my helmets. I measure just at like 22.5 inches around the full circumference of my head. Medium fits me spot on. There's no surprises there. I would certainly say this is fitting true to what the sizing chart is going to recommend. So get your measurements, reference that chart. You should be all set there. Let's talk about the ventilation here at the front. Very straightforward. Even with the gloved hand, this little tab is very easy to find. Um, not too finicky there. And I like the top vent. That's very easy to manipulate. It's this large piece. So I don't have to kind of figure out where those small tabs are nowadays. This is nice. It's a solid piece there. And then working our way towards the rear, you can see we've got a bit of a spoiler at the rear and you can actually open and close those as well. And that's going to create that Venturi effect, you know, pulling the airflow through the helmet, through the EPS to keep you nice and comfortable. And I like that it actually says uh, on this tab, it says open. So you know when you've got it opened and closed because you can't really see what it's updating and what it's changing. Definitely a bit more on the aggressive side of the spectrum when it comes to the shell design, very much in the sport category, I'd say, but geared more towards you know commuters and, and sport touring riders out there with the addition of the internal sun visor. And that's the next thing I wanted to talk about. This is the uh, internal sun visor tab right here towards the top. It is very easy to, to open open and close. And I like that they put that on the top for us versus putting it down here on the side because what that does is it makes it a bit of a pain when I'm trying to add a Bluetooth communication system. So I really like that they have it up top. It's very easy to find. Uh, once you find it a few times, it becomes muscle memory. It's very easy, easy to open and close. And there's really excellent coverage with this as well. You can see it goes all the way down. Sometimes it'll they'll come up a little bit short. Really great coverage. So kudos to Shark on that one there. Now let's talk about the shield. Lock tab at the center. I personally like the lock tabs. Some people hate it. It's a kind of hate or love relationship there with those. I think it's very easy. And again, much like uh, finding the, uh, the internal sun visor mechanism, I think after you use it a few times, it's gonna quickly become muscle memory. So not a big deal for me there. It is a very flat shield, so it provides really excellent optics, you know, seeing out of it. Uh, nothing's really warped or anything like that. I sometimes get that with those cheaper face shields. And then over here on the side, it is a pin lock ready face shield. That's what that little tab is representing. The pin lock is included in the box. But one thing I will note, to remove the shield, it's a little bit finicky. And I'm gonna try and show, show you what I mean by that right now. So we've got this locking tab. This is an update from the previous model. It didn't have this locking piece here, but so you're gonna open that and it's supposed to kind of spring out and that's gonna release it and see if we can get it to uh, pop out. Let me uh, undo this side as well. And you can see, you can see what, I, yeah. 
This side came out, no problem. So we swing back over here. That one's still not popped out. So this has to pop out and then you pull the shield away from this piece. You just pull on it pretty aggressively and that's gonna remove the shield. For me, I don't really love that design. I liked it on the previous generation because there was no locking piece here. You just kind of pulled it out. You had to put some force behind it, but it was easier to remove. So for me, uh, not my favorite design with the uh, removing the shield there. Just something to be cognizant of if you are seriously thinking about picking up this helmet. I think once you do it a few times, once you use it, it's not too bad, but it is something that's a little bit finicky for me. Let's move to the interior liner here. I like this extra piece. As you can see, it's gonna come with this uh, little flap here, if you will. That's gonna help you know, reduce some of the wind noise that's gonna be creeping up inside the helmet. So I like that additional coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of that. And you can see that additional piece is actually snapped in. So that's very easy to remove and, and put back in place. Little Velcro towards the front. Not a big deal there, but I like the additional coverage or having the option to get that additional coverage because it is gonna ultimately help reduce the overall wind noise. Now this is an interesting design as well. You can see these large tabs here and so you just pull this. This is gonna release the entire neck roll as you can see here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that out and wrestle it out a little bit. That's your whole neck roll there. So it is easy to remove. That's certainly beneficial. And you've got the same thing going on with the cheek pads as well. So let's go ahead and just pull these out. I like how easily that came out. Nice contour, antimicrobial interior liner. It's very comfortable, no complaints there. Just kind of pull on that tab and there they go. There's your other cheek pad and then the liner system itself. Went ahead and unsnapped that just to make it a little bit easier as I'm pulling this out of here wrestle that part out. You can see nice channels there with the liner itself just to help promote some of that airflow, get the, the airflow moving through. And you'll probably see, let me undo this strap. We do have speaker cutouts on the inside as well. So over here on the side, you can take that right out and that's where your speaker is going to be placed. This is actually set up to accommodate the Shark Tooth system from Shark. If you're hoping to add a Bluetooth system, you can certainly add their proprietary system, but of course it's gonna accommodate other systems as well. No big surprises there. Decent channels on the inside. So airflow is pretty good on this helmet. There's just a few things like the face shield. I'd like more shell sizes, but overall as a commuter option, as a you know kind of sport touring option within Shark's line, given the price point, I would have liked to see it a little bit lighter, but I think the, the fit and the finish and the quality that is here it is certainly on par with what you typically find from Shark. Now, of course, if you're looking for more details, you can always click that info button. That will take you over to RevZilla.com where you can read other rider reviews. See what other riders are saying about this particular helmet. And as always, if you have any questions about these lids or any other gear you might be looking at, please do not hesitate to reach out. Give our gear geeks a call at 877-792-9455 or simply shoot over an email cs at RevZilla.com. Thanks for hanging out with us for a bit, taking a closer look at the Shark Spartan GT helmets. I'm Brandon. Keep it pinned.